This class is titled Survey of 20th Century Culture, and that word survey is pretty important. It means we're only going to look at the main ideas or big picture points within the designated timeline. So how does someone or something get selected to be in this course? For instance, who is Kandinsky and why is he included in this class? This is actually a tough question to answer because there are historical, political, and social forces that help artists either rise to fame or fall to the weight side. And truthfully, there are even politics behind the creation of a textbook or the inclusion of learning resources, such as editor bias or page limitations, which influence topic selection. Getting more to the point, each of our creators of cultural products reviewed in this course have a few commonalities, and the single most important factor is that they are technically or intellectually innovative. To be innovative means to do something new or different, so they create new styles, methods, or materials of doing things and discover new ways for doing old things. All of this falls under the concept of innovation. Here's an illustration. It might be helpful to think of a writer, photographer, or musician that you admire who has done something unique or different from other people. And think about the people we study in this class just the same as you would think about this person that you admire. Just imagine that their contributions were made 100 or so years ago. Now, being innovative is not all it takes to be included in this course. The creator or the cultural product that we look at must also have staying power. It must be relevant. And the artist must be capable or skilled enough in their craft, but also break it down into aspects that nobody else considered. Often the creators will look at have a distinctive style because of their innovations and they have gone on to influence other artists. Think of this modern example. Where would Drake be without Jay-Z, without Tupac or without Ice Cube, without LL Cool J or without Grandmaster Flowers, without the influence of George Clinton and the Parliament Funkadelic, and without the influence of Gil Scott Heron or the influence of Louis Armstrong. Now, the influence of Louis Armstrong and his scat singing is not necessarily easy or obvious to make to uh, modern day hip hop artists, but um, the artists that we look in this course truly do come from a long line of influencing artists. And the line of influencing artists may not always be people who were famous in their day. The one thing that we want to remember is that the innovation that we see from the creators and products that we'll look at in this course evokes something in us as listeners or as viewers that keep us wanting more.